right off the bat, here's what we're gonna be making. And back. Nice. All right, so the other day I was watching a new Epos Vox video, as one does, and he started talking about the newest version of OBS, version 27, and all of the new features that are coming with it. And the feature he mentioned in this specific video was something very exciting about transitions. And it's a functionality that enables the transition I just showed you, and that is integrated track mats. There is now functionality native inside OBS that previously you needed several complicated workarounds to achieve. You needed something like a stream deck or another way to trigger several different commands at once stacked on top of each other to get this sort of dynamic transition. But now all you need is a little bit of technical know-how and you can create some really amazing custom transitions in OBS. And what this track map functionality does is it lets you communicate to OBS what portions of the screen to make transparent while your transition is playing. And we're going to be recreating that transition you just saw for free inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. And as always, we're starting here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page, and we are going to create a new timeline. I'm right clicking in my media pool. I'm going to timelines, create new timeline. And this will just be OBS transition. And we are going to uncheck use project settings, come over to format, and we are going to change this timeline resolution. Now, when we get to OBS, you'll really see why we are structuring our timeline the way that we're going to. And in OBS, it does give you a few different options for how this effect is formatted. But for what we are going to do, essentially, we are going to create a double wide timeline. So we're going to have two complete 1920 by 1080 clips next to each other horizontally. So because of that, that means we need to change our timeline resolution from 1920 by 1080 to 3840 by 1080. And then I'm going to click create. And then if you'll see my preview, we do have this double wide image. Then I'm going to make sure my effects library is open, come down to effects, and I'm going to grab the fusion composition and drop that right onto my timeline and just pull this down. So it's uh, right around two seconds. Then with our playhead over that, we can press this button to open the fusion page. Now, if you're new to the Fusion page, this can get complicated pretty quick, especially some of the ways we are going to be uh, playing with the format and aspect ratio and some of those. If you want a more complete introduction to the Fusion page, I have another video all about that. I highly recommend you check that out if this is something you're really interested in diving into. If you just want to create this transition, I'll do my best to walk through as thoroughly as I can so that anyone can follow along. And we are going to start by pressing this button to drop in a background node. And we can preview that by pressing either a one or two to pull that up in our viewer windows. And you will see that by default, this inherits the aspect ratio of the timeline we are pulling from. But I want to start by creating a standard 1920 by 1080 shape and then duplicating that later. So with this node selected, I'm gonna come over to the inspector over here. I'm going to tab over to image. I'm going to uncheck auto resolution. And I'm actually gonna change this back to 1920. Now here you have our standard image. And we are going to be using this as a bit of a canvas, but we don't want this black background for now. So I'm gonna go back to color and just pull down this alpha channel so that it is completely transparent. Great first step. And now we are going to start to build out the actual visual transition. To do that, I'm going to actually copy this background node, paste it, and this second background node, I'm going to pull all of these up or you could pull into this color picker here but I'm gonna pull all of these up so we have a white background. And then on that, I'm going to press this button to add an ellipse or circular mask to that. You'll see that right there. And in that ellipse setting, I'm gonna come over into the inspector to controls. I'm going to uncheck solid and pull up border width so that we have this nice little ring. And in this ellipse mask, you will see in the inspector, you have controls for width and height, and that is just width and height of that mask. But if you wanna use these controls to scale your image, you could keyframe both of them and have them animate at the same rate, or you could do this. I'm going to right click on height, go to expression, and I'm gonna come down to this little plus sign. I'm gonna click and hold that drag to width, and then now you'll see if I just take that width and pull it up or down, it scales that circle uniformly. And this is how we're actually going to animate this image. I'm gonna to come to zero, pull this width down to zero, keyframe, pull up towards the end of my clip here, maybe about there, yeah. 
and I'm just going to increase this until it is larger than our entire frame. And if we play that back, you'll see the circle just grows over time. And in our transition, the inside of this ring is where our track mat is going to be. And that's going to communicate to OBS to cut out the center of the video we feed it and place our next scene. So because of that, we are going to start to produce two uh, parallel animations and work on them at the same time. So I'm actually going to copy this background and ellipse and I'm going to click Control C to copy, but then Control Shift V to paste. And you'll see if I drag these out, now we have these two nodes, but they are connected by this green line. That is because these nodes are instanced nodes. The way it's set up right now is that these nodes are exact copies of each other. And if you change any setting on one, it will change that setting on the other. But we're gonna do something pretty interesting. Watch this. I'm going to come to this instanced ellipse node here. I'm going to right click next to this checkbox for solid and I'm going to go to D instance. Now I can click that solid and you'll see nothing changed in this viewer, but that is still because we are viewing the original background node. If I pull up the second background node in viewer two, you'll see now this circle is filled in and this will be where we pull our track mat from. This is already pretty cool. If you just wanted a circular transition, you could move forward with this, but we are going to add one little bit of flair and that is that displaced warpy effect you saw earlier. And to do that, I'm gonna pull up the search tool with shift space and search for displace. And we're actually going to create two copies of this and take the output of both of these background nodes right into those displace nodes. I'll preview them one and two. And you'll see that nothing is changing for now. And that is because we need to create a fast noise node. I'll preview that on our first and you'll see a bit what's going on. First, you'll see that like our background nodes, this pulled in the aspect ratio of our timeline, but we want to change that. So we'll come over to image, uncheck auto resolution, change this back to 1920 by 1080. That's great. And then now you see what this is doing. By default, it is this little bit of smoky texture, but you have a bunch of controls for how this looks, including scale if you want it really detailed, contrast to make it more contrast. You spread out the highs and lows. And this, we're actually gonna take the output of and plug it into both of these displace nodes. And you'll see what it's doing here. I'll pull up this first displace in my first node again. And you'll see you have this little wiggly texture. So it is taking this fast noise pattern and where it sees brighter parts of the screen, it is acting on that displaced node to push our original image or the circles we fed into it. And the settings of the fast noise node will really control how much displace we have. So if I pull up that contrast, you'll see it goes far more. If I pull up the scale, you'll see it gets pretty more detailed. And this is already coming along great. You'll see if I scrub through my timeline, you'll see that circle grows and that our track mount on the right also grows. You'll see that by the end, this circle starts getting a little thin. And that is because the width of the circle doesn't change over time. So just to do that, I'm going to come into our first ellipse and I'm going to change this border width, but it will pull both the border width for both of these. Remember border. So you actually have to go to the border width instance node and you can right click that border width D instance, go back to your first ellipse and then you can pull up that border width so that it maintains some nice width over the entire course of the animation. Great, so this is the heart of our effect, but now we have to package it back up so we can export what we need. And the only other really important formatting step is I'm going to take this second displace node here, which is our track mat, and I'm going to create another background node, change that over to 1920 by 1080, and connect these two outputs. So now that displace is coming over this black background and we just get that on a black background instead of transparent. This is how track mats have to function. They are a black and white image where the white image is transparent and then on a scale down to black where it is not, where it's opaque, where you see the entire image. And coming out of this displace and this merge, we are going to add a transform node to both of those. Make sure those are connected. And this is important. So on our track mat here, this transform, we're actually going to come in and change the center from 0.5 to one. And you'll see it looks weird, but this is correct. It actually slid half off of this screen. So you're only seeing this half. And on our first transition mat here in transform, 
we are doing the opposite, which is actually bringing this down to zero. And if we preview that, you'll see it as half off as well. And this is where nodes come in handy. Check this out. I'm going to create a new background node, which by default will be this double wide image. I'm going to pull down alpha so it's transparent. And first, I'm going to take the output of this first transform. Then I'm going to connect the outputs of these two transform nodes. And if I preview that, you'll see we only see half of each image. But if I bring the output of that to the output of our new background node and preview that, you'll see that because it has that double wide image, it retained the information from those transform nodes. And now it has brought it back where our composition actually has size to display those. So you see we have back to back this first image and then our track mat. Now in my example, this transition was blue and all you would have to do to change this color is go back to your original background node. You would want to come to your instanced background node here right click and go to de-instance color group. And then remember, you would have to go back to your first background node after you de-instance and you could modify this however you want to change the color that you're actually going to see in your transition. This time I might keep it a sort of bright green just for fun. So now we have this final merge with both of our images and I'm going to pipe that right into our media out. And this media out node is what takes it back to the timeline. So I'll click this button to head back to the edit page. And here you have your image. Now on the edit page, it won't give you that checkerboard pattern to tell you what is transparent, but we know from the fusion page that we have that black background over our track mat, but not over this image on this side that we're going to see when we process our transition. And then I'm going to click this little icon down here to head to the deliver page. Now, when it comes to exporting in Kodak, I just learned a whole lot from another E plus Fox video where he talks about uh, ideal formats and codecs for this sort of transparent transition work. It's pretty technical. I'm going to link you to that video. The conclusion he comes to is that really what's best is an uncompressed AVI file. That will be a super large file size, but because it's uncompressed, it won't mess as much with OBS while you're processing other things. You just need it from a fast drive. Unfortunately, you can't export natively from that codec, if I understand correctly, in DaVinci Resolve. So he talks a little bit about converting to it using FFmpeg. Again, highly recommend that video. What we're gonna do is export this with transparency, which I'll be able to demo in OBS. It just won't be the most efficient. So for the initial format, I'm going to export this out of. I am here on the custom page. Uh, we are using a format of QuickTime, the codec Grass Valley. This is an intermediate codec. It's pretty complicated. This is just what I'm running with. And our type we set to HQX, which allows us to set this custom resolution down here to 3640 by 1080. And we check this box for export alpha. Then you can just make sure you're exporting to the right place, given a name and click this button to add to the render queue. And then over here in our render queue, once this is all ready to go, you can click this button to export. And after that, we're done in Resolve, we can head right over to OBS. So here we are in OBS, and I have this scene of just my desktop and OBS on here, and then I have a clip of me one-shotting a dragon, just because. <laughs> so I'm gonna start on this desktop, and we are gonna come over to Scene Transitions. I'm going to click down to Stinger, and then I'm gonna click this gear and come down to Properties. And that will open up this main prompt. And then you want to navigate to wherever you just saved your file. Here I have this transition I exported. I'll click open. And then you'll see underneath, if you're in OBS 27, this use a track mat option. We're gonna make sure that is checked. And also on our mat layout, we want same file, side by side, stinger on the left, track mat on the right. This is what I talked about for unique formatting. It has this option, it has a stacked option, and then it has separate file options. So we could have created a file that was 1920 by 2160, or we could have exported those as two separate files, but this works pretty great. So now if we have that checked, I don't have inverted colors checked because we should have done it correctly. And now if we press this button to preview our animation, you'll see that that green circle comes out and expands and as it grows, it reveals the next scene you are transitioning to. This is pretty cool. And the implications for this new functionality in OBS are pretty wild. This is a super simple transition, but you could build out something pretty wild in the Fusion page and have it work flawlessly with this track mat. There are some additional features in the Fusion page that I am pretty excited to explore. 
that could make it very easy to pull complicated track mats from more detailed effects. Stick around, I might be making another video about that. But for now, this is super cool and I can't wait to keep playing around with these new tools. As I said, it is probably still best to take this file and convert it through something like FFmpeg into that uncompressed AVI so it doesn't tax your system too much, but also of course that highly depends on what kind of system you're running, whether this will lag or playback slower or any of that. But that is all I have for you today. I'm super excited for this video for you all to see and for you all to start playing around with this new way to do something as simple as transitioning in OBS. Thanks. I'll see you next time.